Hello and good Friday. You know, Australians love to say the opposite of what they mean in order to be humorous. They will call a skinny person fatso and they'll call a tall person shorty. Could have been an Aussie then who called Good Friday good when it was anything but good. As we listen to the international children's translation version of this terrible time, I encourage you to put down what you think you know about this story and just simply listen as though you've never heard the story before. Invite the Holy Spirit to show you something that you haven't seen before. And appreciate yet again the terrible lengths Jesus went through for you and for me to take away our sin, to make a way for us to be saved for eternity. And then respond again in faith. Trust him for what he's done. Ask him to come in and be our Lord and be our Saviour. And then worship him with a full heart. Because only God could do this for us. Only God could make this Friday a good Friday. It was almost time for the Jewish feast of unleavened bread, called the Passover feast. The leading priests and teachers of the law were trying to find a way to kill Jesus, but they were afraid of the people. One of Jesus' twelve apostles was named Judas Iscariot. Satan entered Judas, and he went to the leading priests and some of the soldiers who guarded the temple. He talked to them about a way to give Jesus to them. They were pleased and promised to give Judas money. Judas agreed. Then he waited for the best time to turn Jesus over to them without the crowd knowing it. The day of unleavened bread came. This was the day the Passover lambs had to be sacrificed. Jesus said to Peter and John, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us to eat. They asked, Where do you want us to prepare it? Jesus said, Listen, after you go into the city, you will see a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. Tell the person who owns that house, The teacher asks that you please show us the room where he and his followers may eat the Passover meal. Then he will show you to a large room upstairs. This room is ready for you. Prepare the Passover meal there. So Peter and John left. Everything happened as Jesus had said. So they prepared the Passover meal. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles were sitting at the table. He said to them, I very much wanted to eat this Passover with you before I die. I will never eat another Passover meal until it is given its true meaning in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup. He gave thanks to God for it and said, Take this cup and give it to everyone here. I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until God's kingdom comes. Then Jesus took some bread. He thanked God for it, broke it, and gave it to the apostles. Then Jesus said, This bread is my body that I'm giving for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup shows the new agreement that God makes with his people. This new agreement begins with my blood which is poured out for you. Jesus said, One of you will turn against me. His hand is by my hand on the table. The Son of Man will do what God has planned, but... How terrible it will be for the man who gives the Son of Man to be killed. Then the apostles asked each other, Which one of us would do that to Jesus? Satan has asked to test all of you as a farmer tests his wheat. Simon, Simon, I've prayed that you will not lose your faith. Help your brothers be stronger when you come back to me. But Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you. I will even die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, 
Before the rooster crows tonight, you will say you don't know me. You will say this three times. Then Jesus said to the apostles, When I sent you out without money, a bag or sandals, did you need anything? They said, No. He said to them, But now, if you have money or a bag, carry that with you. If you don't have a sword, sew your coat and buy one. The scripture says he was treated like a criminal. This scripture must have its full meaning. It was written about me and it's happening now. The follower said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said, That's enough. Jesus left the city and went to the Mount of Olives. His followers went with him. Jesus went there often. He said to his followers, Pray for strength against temptation. Then Jesus went about a stone's throw away from them. He kneeled down and prayed, Father, if it is what you want, then let me not have this cup of suffering. But do what you want, not what I want. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him to help him. Jesus was full of pain. He prayed even more. Sweat dropped from his face as if he were bleeding. When he finished praying, he went to his followers. They were asleep. Their sadness had made them very tired. Jesus said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray for strength against temptation. While Jesus was speaking, a crowd came up. One of the twelve apostles was leading them. He was Judas. He came close to Jesus so that he could kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you using the kiss to give the Son of Man to his enemies? The followers of Jesus were standing there too. They saw what was happening. They said to Jesus, Lord, should we use our swords? And one of them did use his sword. He cut off the right ear of the servant of the high priest. Jesus said, Stop! And he touched the servant's ear and healed him. Those who came to arrest Jesus were the leading priests, the soldiers who guarded the temple, and the, other, the older Jewish leaders. Jesus said to them, Why did you come out here with swords and sticks? Do you think I'm a criminal? I was with you every day in the temple. Why didn't you try to arrest me there? But this is your time, the time when darkness rules. They arrested Jesus and they took him away. They brought him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed them, but he did not go near Jesus. The soldiers started a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat together and Peter sat with them. A servant girl saw Peter sitting there near the light. She looked closely at Peter's face and said, This man was also with him. But Peter said, No, nah, it's not true. He said, girl, I don't know him. A short time later, another person saw Peter and said, you, you're also one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. An hour later, another man insisted, it's true. This man was with him. He's from Galilee. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Immediately, while Peter was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered that the Lord, what the Lord had said, Before the rooster crows tonight, you will say three times that you don't know me. Then Peter went outside and cried with much pain in his heart. Some men were guarding Jesus. They made fun of him like this. They covered his eyes so they could not see him. Then they hit him and said, Prove that you are a prophet and tell us who hit you. The men said many cruel things to Jesus. When day came, the older leaders of the people, the leading priests and the teachers of the law came together. They led Jesus away to their highest court and they said, If you are the Christ, then tell us that you are. Jesus said to them, If I tell you I am the Christ, you will not believe me. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But, beginning now, the Son of Man will sit at the right hand of the powerful God. They all said, Then are you the Son of God? Jesus said to them, Yes, you're right when you say that I am. They said, 
Why do we need witnesses now? We ourselves heard him say this. And the whole group stood up and led Jesus to Pilate. They began to accuse Jesus. They told Pilate, we caught this man telling things that were confusing our people. He says that we should not pay taxes to Caesar. He calls himself the Christ, the king. Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, yes, that's right. Pilate said to the leading priests and the people, I find nothing wrong with this man. They said again and again, but Jesus is making trouble with the people. He teaches all around Judea, he began in Galilee and now he's here. Pilate heard this and asked if Jesus was from Galilee. If so, Jesus was under Herod's authority. Herod was in Jerusalem at that time, so Pilate sent Jesus to him. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad. He'd heard about Jesus and they'd wanted to meet him for a long time. Herod was hoping to see Jesus work a miracle. Herod asked Jesus many questions, but Jesus said nothing. The leading priests and teachers of the law were standing there. They were shouting things against Jesus. Then Herod and his soldiers made fun of Jesus. They dressed him in a kingly robe and sent him back to Pilate. In the past, Pilate and Herod had always been enemies, but on that day, they became friends. Pilate called all the people together with the leading priests and the Jewish leaders. He said to them, You brought this man to me. You said he was making trouble among the peoples. But I have questioned him before you all, and I have not found him guilty of the things you say. Also, Herod found nothing wrong with him. He sent him back to us. Look, he's done nothing for which he should die. So after I punish him, I will let him go free. But all the people shouted, Kill him! Let Barabbas go free! Barabbas was a man who was in prison because he started a riot in the city. He was guilty of murder. Pilate wanted to let Jesus go free, so he told this to the crowd, but they shouted again, Kill him! Kill him! Kill him on a cross! A third time Pilate said to them, Why? What wrong has he done? I can find no reason to kill him. So I'll have him punished and set him free. But they continued to shout. They demanded that Jesus be killed on the cross. Their yelling became so loud that Pilate wanted to give them what they wanted. They wanted Barabbas to go free, the man who was in jail for starting a riot and for murder. Pilate let Barabbas go free and gave Jesus to them to be killed. The soldiers led Jesus away. At that time there was a man coming into the city from the fields. His name was Simon and he was from the city of Cyrene. The soldiers forced Simon to carry Jesus' cross and walk behind him. A large crowd of people was following Jesus. Some of the women were sad and crying. But Jesus turned to them and said, Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves and for your children too. The time is coming when people will say, Happy are the women who cannot have children. Happy are the women who have no babies to nurse. Then people will say to the mountains, Fall on us. And they will say to the hills, Cover us. If they act like this now when life is good, what will happen when bad times come? There were also two criminals led out with Jesus to be killed. Jesus and the two criminals were taken to a place called the Skull. There the soldiers nailed Jesus to his cross. They also nailed the criminals to their crosses, one beside Jesus on the right and the other beside Jesus on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. The soldiers threw lots to decide who would get his clothes. The people stood there watching. The Jewish leaders made fun of Jesus. They said, if, if he's God's chosen one, the Christ, then let him save himself. He saved other people, didn't he? Even the soldiers made fun of him. They came to Jesus and offered him some vinegar. They said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. At the top of the cross where these words were written, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals began to shout in insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Christ? Then save yourself and save us too. 
The other criminal stopped him and said, You should fear God. You're getting the same punishment as he is. We are punished justly. We should die, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then this criminal said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Then Jesus said to him, listen, what I say is true. Today you will be with me in paradise. It was about noon and the whole land became dark until three o'clock in the afternoon. There was no sun. The curtain in the temple was torn into two pieces. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, I give you my life. After Jesus said this, he died. The army officer there saw what happened. He praised God saying, I know this was a good man. Many people had gathered there to watch this thing. When they saw what happened, they returned home. They beat their chests because they were so sad. Those who were close friends of Jesus were there. Some were women who had followed Jesus from Galilee. They all stood far away from the cross and watched. A man from the Jewish town of Arimathea was there too. His name was Joseph. He was a good religious man. He wanted the kingdom of God to come. Joseph was a member of the Jewish council, but he had not agreed when the other leaders decided to kill Jesus. Joseph went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. So Joseph took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in cloth. Then he, took, then he put Jesus' body in a tomb that was cut in a wall of rock. This tomb had never been used before. This was late on preparation day. When the sun went down, the Sabbath day would begin. The women who had come from Galilee with Jesus followed Joseph. They saw the tomb and saw inside where the body of Jesus was laid. Then the women left to prepare perfumes and spices. On the Sabbath day they rested as the law of Moses commanded.